these are my grocery bills for the last week. $180, 108, and 88, coming to a total of $370 just for the week. For a grand total of $1,480 a month, just on groceries, which is three times what it used to be. Whether it's spending more money on gas, groceries, rent, transportation, and even eating out, no one can afford anything anymore, even if you're in tech. Things are getting a little bit too expensive, and it seems like they just keep getting more expensive. I feel like my buying power before in 2020 was a lot higher than it is now. Prior to recently, software engineers were making a lot of money. They were demanding higher sign-on bonuses, annual bonuses, more benefits, and longer vacation time. It felt like the money would never stop flowing, and their incomes would put them squarely in the upper middle class or even the upper classes. However, the definition of middle class and upper class have drastically changed. Take a look at what Andre has to say about this. What does middle class actually mean today? Data shows that middle class means anyone making between 38,000 to 114,000 a year. And if that's the definition of middle class, unfortunately, that target is moving farther and farther away from us. So the definition of middle class is moving farther and farther away, but most software engineers still fall within that range. If we look at the US Bureau of Labor and Statistics, the median salary for a software engineer in 2022 was $127,000. In 2023, that number increased to $132,000. This puts software engineers squarely in the upper middle class to upper classes, right? Well, we haven't looked at the entire picture just yet. The feeling of being middle class is being able to afford the essentials. Nothing too fancy, but you should be able to afford a house, a car, sending your kids to a decent school, and living a very comfortable life. Maybe not too extravagant, but comfortable. You shouldn't have to worry much about the cost of your eggs or your bread, yet that's exactly what's happening. I eat eggs every morning, mm -hmm. and before the price of eggs was like, you know, like 79 cents. Yeah. Now it's like $2, which is like doubled in price. But sometimes like you see the price is like $7 for a loaf of bread. Bread is literally just water, flour, and like yeast. That's it. The problem is AI and inflation were a bitch of a combination. Remember the median software engineering salaries that I showed you? Yeah, well, the cost of inflation has been much higher. From $127,000 to $132,000, we see an increase of about 1%. Yet throughout 2022 and 2023, we were seeing inflation rates upwards of 8.5 to 9.6%. Of course, there's more at play, but just in the past four months, layoffs have been higher than ever. Salaries and bonuses have been slashed, and inflation, of course, has gone through the roof. While incomes stagnate, the cost of living has risen dramatically over the years. To put it into perspective, the average household income in the U.S. saw just a 16% increase over the last 50 years. In comparison, housing costs increased by 190% and college tuition shot up by nearly 264% in the same time period. So these are all the groceries that we got. Uh, let's do that thing where they just show up on the table. All of this was over $100. In fact, this was $5, 24 ounces of brown rice. If that's not expensive, I don't know what is. Now, it's nice and old to show increasing grocery prices, but why does it feel like software engineers still can't afford anything? Money. No, no money. I mean, we just looked at six-figure median salaries that also approach the three, four, and $500,000 mark. But affordability is completely subjective to where you're living and the cost of living there and the type of lifestyle that you're living. For example, most software engineers reside in places like New York, San Francisco, Austin, Texas, and Washington. And in order to feel relatively comfortable living in these places, this means having a house, reliable schools and daycare, good food prices and transportation, etc. Just imagine having a fairly comfortable, modest life. But if we look at the new middle-class income, the results are shocking. 
The top cities are usually where software engineers reside. We have Sunnyvale, California, where the upper bounds of the middle class income is $339,000. So if you make $339,000 in Sunnyvale, California, you are still technically middle class. A lot of junior engineers aren't even making $100,000 a lot of times, even if they live in those big cities. If we look at San Jose and San Francisco as well, $273,000 and $267,000, which is a lot. Other cities like Austin, in Texas require $178,000 as the upper bounds on the middle class income. So anywhere between 60 and $178,000. The middle class income has quickly risen to very extreme highs. Based on these stats, let's take a look at the median house prices in places like California, New York, and Texas. Let's zero in on California here because again, a lot of tech people are in that area. The median home price in California is about $787,000. If we go back to the median household income in California, that's about $91,000. So let's go ahead and do some calculations to see if people can actually afford something like that. So let's start with the total price of the house, $787,000. And let's say you put 10% down as a down payment, which is about $78,700. So we can subtract this number to get a general cost of the mortgage. That total is $708,300. Let's say we have an average interest rate of 7%. That's what interest rates are looking like right now. So we take 7% of the total mortgage or whatever is remaining to pay off, and we pay that every single year. So right now, 7% of $708,000 is $49,581 per year or $4,131 per month. Now it's a little bit nuanced because as we go on, the mortgage balance gets lower and so we pay more of the principal than we do the actual interest. So let's say we have a 30 year loan. We're gonna divide the total mortgage by 30 years and then by 12 months to get the total monthly payment just to pay off the principal. So the monthly total comes to $1,967 and now we have to add the interest per month as well. So our total monthly cost is $6,099, which we don't even need to take out a calculator to understand that that is way above what someone making $91,000 can afford per month. And don't forget about paying for HOA, property taxes, move-in costs, and even utilities. And of course, you're not just gonna be paying for housing. I mean, you have to survive and live. So you're gonna have to pay for food, going out, transportation, vacations, pretty much anything else that you do in your life. So with the median household income in California being $91,000, there's just no way, especially after taxes, you don't even make enough to afford the house itself, let alone everything else in your life that you may have to pay for. And this doesn't even include rising inflation costs for other goods and services. If you account for things like student loans, car payments, gas, transportation, eating out, and among more, it gets even harder. Gen Z doesn't agree that $74,000 is middle class. No kidding, it's not even close. Check this out. If you take $74,000 for a Gen Z, or let's say they have a bachelor's degree and they're 25 years old. First of all, $74,000 is much higher than the average income. Most Gen Zers are probably making anywhere from 40 to 50, maybe 60, but let's use 74. The take home after taxes, 401k and health insurance is $4,300. The average college monthly payment on a loan is about 500 bucks. You're down to 3,800. Let's say this person is financially responsible, decides to split a two bedroom apartment in a medium sized city like Orlando so that their payment is 1,200 a piece, 200 for utilities, so 1,400. Now, unless they're gonna have Lucky Charms and peanut butter and jelly, their groceries are gonna cost about 600 bucks if they're trying to get chicken, beef, and some healthy stuff. You have a $400 car payment, $200 in insurance, 150 for gas, $100 for a cell phone, leaves you with 950 bucks. This is no savings, investment, no emergency fund. Let's give them at least 300 to go on a couple dates or to hang out with their friends for the month so they can enjoy life a little bit. They're left with only $650. A bachelor's degree, 74K salary. You are splitting a two bedroom apartment with a friend and only have $650 left a month. It would take you years to save up the 30,000 that you would need for a down payment on a house with the closing costs. But even if you could get that down payment saved, you would still need to make $120,000 a year to be considered for a $400,000 loan. So how do software engineers fix this? Well, again, these salaries are pretty great, so I don't wanna create this false illusion that they can't afford anything. They're by no means a lower middle class profession. But Andre said it best, the problem is your choices. 
a lot of our life comes down to our choices and our luck. For example, as many as one in four people making 200,000 a year in the US are living paycheck to paycheck. That seems like a result of bad choices, choosing to stay in a high cost of living area, when instead you could choose to save and invest and live below your means and not go out to eat and live with a roommate for a couple years. I still live with one to this day. If you choose to live in these tech hubs, honestly, life is just gonna be more expensive by default. So you may have to cut things out like dining out and drinking with your friends and going on extravagant vacations. The alternative is to move to cheaper states like the Midwest or the South. Their cost of living is a lot more affordable and then you can afford to splurge on more things. The people in California and New York, they definitely make a lot more than us. And your best bet, like if you wanna be like very, very well off is to get a remote job and live in the Midwest or like Colorado. Colorado is also very expensive, but like somewhere in the Midwest, if you're making like Seattle or California money living here, you're like, you should not be struggling paycheck to paycheck. If you are, again, you're doing a lot wrong. It all comes down to what's the most important thing to you and how much you're willing to sacrifice to get that thing in life. I spent a lot of time living below my means, never buying coffee from Starbucks, eating at home a lot, choosing to fly off season when I went on vacation, renting out cheaper homes, or even crashing at my parents' place to save money. Eventually, it gave me the ability to live the life that I really wanted to. And of course, I do feel the pinch with how the market is today, but there are certain things in life that you could probably let go of in order to feel a bit more safe and comfortable. So so hopefully this helps. Check out one of my other videos if you want to learn more about tech and just life tips, life hacks in general.